In this video, we continue to learn concepts in molecular orbital theory by explaining, explaining uh, non-bonding orbitals. All right, so we're going to think now about the HF molecule and see if we can draw a molecular orbital diagram for uh, that molecule. All right, the electronic configurations of the atoms are 1s1, one one, and then for fluorine, you have neon, uh, sorry, helium, and then 2s2, 2p5. All right, we draw the molecular orbital diagram uh, here. There will be an energy scale. And here we will have the 1s orbital of hydrogen. Here we will have fluorine in the middle HF. OK, so that will be the 1s orbital of uh, hydrogen, uh, one electron. And then uh, we have the uh, valence orbitals of fluorine. Okay, and the way that they work is the 2s uh, is here and the two P's are going to be out here. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, so now we have to think about how uh, this orbital uh, for the hydrogen atom, those orbitals for the fluorine atom, how do they mix to generate uh, molecular orbitals? All right, so it's pretty obvious that uh, the one is uh, orbital is much higher in energy than two is uh, orbital of fluorine. They're so different in, different in energy that the mixing is actually not going to take place. And again, uh, uh, there will not be a combination between the 1s orbital and the 2s orbital. For these combinations to take place, the energy has to uh, be reasonably similar. Okay, so uh, that's not how um, uh, the combinations emerge, right? So then what happens is that if you actually don't have a combination between this orbital and that orbital, then this orbital goes to the molecular orbital diagram unchanged. Okay, so we can call this uh, still the 2s orbital of the fluorine, and it will have two electrons. But again, notice that uh, in this case, because this orbital does not interact with any other orbital, it goes to the molecular orbital diagram unchanged, and that is what we call a non-bonding orbital. Right? It's, it isn't uh, bonding or anti-bonding. It's neither of those. It's non-bonding. It's the same thing as an atomic orbital, but now it's in the molecule. Okay, so that is the concept of a, uh, a non-bonding orbital. Now we can still form a bond between uh, uh, the 1s orbital and uh, perhaps the 2p orbital. So let's actually try to see how these um, uh, molecular orbitals then would, would work. Right, when we think about the uh, fluorine atom, those 2p orbitals, you're going to have, they're going to be uh, distributed in space uh, in per perpendicular directions, right? So if we call this the z direction, you'll have the 2pc, and if we call this the x direction, that will be the 2px, and then the y direction will be coming in and out of the plane. Okay, so I'm going to call this a 2pc, that will be uh, the 2px, and then the 2py will be coming in and out of the plane, which I can draw here at an angle. Okay? And each one of these has one electron. Okay? Actually, uh, this one will have two, this one will have two. I'm going to assume that uh, the 2pc orbital is the one that is singly occupied right here. Okay, and uh, part of the orbital will be positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. All right, so the question is what type of, of uh, linear combinations, what type of uh, mixing can take place with the one is wave function of the hydrogen atom? Okay, and we can see two different things here. Notice how the 2pc orbital, okay, uh, if it overlaps with the hydrogen atom, that overlap is going to be head-on, okay, that combination is going to be head-on, and that is going to be different from what happens if you actually have uh, the 2px and the 2pc, where uh, the combinations are not as direct as when you have actually a 2pc pointing directly in the direction of the hydrogen atom. Okay, so let's actually examine that with a little bit more detail. All right, so I'm going to erase this um, electronic configurations, and then uh, I'm going to look at the combinations between uh, the 1s of hydrogen and the 2pc of fluorine, okay, plus minus. Notice that I have this, uh, if I have this combination, Okay, I will generate a molecular orbital that looks like this. I'm going to call this H, that is going to be F. I right, see so we'll have H, F, and the resulting molecular orbital will be uh, bonding. You'll have an orbital like this, okay, plus, and then a low layer minus. But this is a bonding situation because you have a region of, of space in between the two atoms with electron density, which gives rise to the covalent bond. Uh, the anti-bonding orbital, so this is what we call the, uh, we can call it the sigma 1s 2pc, if you want to, and it will be bonded. And then we will have the anti-bonding combination, right? So the anti-bonding combination is where you uh, change the sign of 
uh, that coefficient in the linear combination you have minus and plus. Okay, and what that, uh, uh, then what this does is it generates an antibody molecular orbital, which would look like this. A H F. And now you will have here a tiny little lobe of amplitude, positive, and then positive. There's clearly an node in between the two uh, in between the two atoms, and that will be your sigma antibonding, one s uh, two b c. Okay, so that's how the orbitals would look like, and then we can actually already write them uh, here in the molecular orbital diagram. Okay, so again that combination would be prior to a bonding orbital, which we would call sigma one s two b c. Okay, with that one. And then an antibonding orbital, okay, sigma uh, 1s 2pc antibonding. Okay, great. So, what happens with the 2px and 2py, which we have right there? All right, we can try to think about how those linear combinations take place, and I'm going to use here the 2px registration, okay, plus and minus. All right, so this is what we would call the um, linear combination that should give rise to a bonding orbital, but what we notice here is that when you mix this uh, uh, with that, okay, that says that you will have an in-phase step of interference, you will have constructive interference that should give rise to a bonding component, but uh, at the same time, you have a negative lobe here in the 2px orbital, okay, and then uh, what you actually have is that right there you would not have a bonding uh, uh, situation, right, there would be a node. Okay, so whatever you're gaining with this uh, uh, lobe, okay, you're actually losing with that lobe. Okay, in the end, what this means is that nothing is gained from the inter from this interaction because again, the two uh, separate interactions with the two separate lobes actually cancel each other out, and again, you don't have anything that is bonding or anti-bonding. But if you would decide to change the uh, uh, the sign of the linear combination, you would have this, okay, which is exactly the same case as before. Okay, you would be gaining an interaction right here. And then you will have a destructive interference right there, nothing is gained. Okay, so notice how the 1s and the 2px, if we call this the z direction, that will be the 2px, okay, uh, they can't interact, they will not interact. The same thing happens with the 2py, which is coming in and out of the plane. Okay, you will have a positive lobe coming in uh, inside the plane, negative lobe uh, uh, beyond the plane, or backwards, and again, uh, there's no gain from that interaction. So what happens is that uh, uh, when you draw the molecular orbital diagram, because these orbitals cannot uh, spatially interact with that 1s, they go to the molecular orbital diagram unchanged. Okay, that would be the 2px, and that would be the 2py. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, finish up here this uh, molecular orbital diagram. Okay, notice that that electron and that electron are going to populate here the bonding, uh, sigma 1s 2pc. And then uh, that will be the 2px, 2py, those remain unchanged. Okay, and those will be non bonding orbitals. Okay, so how do we calculate here now the bond order? The definition of the bond order is the number of electrons in bonding orbitals minus number of electrons in anti bonding orbitals divided over 2. Notice that in that bond order equation, you actually do not have any contribution from the non bonding orbitals. And that is still correct, because okay, so the non bonding orbitals do not intervene in the calculation of the bond order. Okay, so in this molecule, we're going to have a total of eight electrons, okay, but of those eight electrons, six, two, four, and six, are in non-bonding orbitals. And again, those do not participate in the bond order. Okay, the bond order is calculated by the number of electrons that you have in bonding orbitals, two, minus the number of electrons that you have in anti-bonding orbitals, zero, uh, over two. So two minus zero over two is equal to one. There's a bond order of one for the HF molecule. Okay, and the molecule you can clearly see that it should be diamagnetic because there's no unpaired spins. All right, so this has been an explanation of the concept of non-bonding orbitals uh, by using the HF molecule as an example.